Hello everyone. In this video I'm not going to talk about stimulator. Well, at least not about this one because I'm not satisfied with how I tie this fly. Even though I made a video. Uh, the hackle is too short. Wings are okay. Tail is a bit too long. Some barbs just went off. I just don't like it for the video. I like it for fishing. I don't like it for video. Let's go on. Uh, I do like fishing stimulators, but I prefer this way. Let me show you. I prefer this kind of kind of stimulators. And I wasn't lazy, so I made a video about this one. But then again, I was not so happy about this one either, because on both this one, I used mule deer here, here I used white tail and they're both, well, I don't want to use the word but S-H-I-T compared to the, this one so obviously I could fish both of these and this one but for the video purpose I want to make proper fly so I used bull elk on this one, I used all the other materials same as in previous two flies, more or less. So let me just get into it, because I think it's rather important how I mounted those wings. And let's see why. Uh, I'll start with the thread, and I'll start with a mistake at the beginning. So just start with your thread, do whatever you want, like cover, do body, and then when it comes to the wing placement, most people would do, I would do something like this. I mean, the whole my life I was doing something like this. You take your hair, you cut it or you don't cut it. Some people would just take it here and like grab it, cut the excess. What else you can do? You can cut it flush and uh, catch it again. Like whatever you do, most people would leave those tag ends too long. What this means is that like yeah you will secure your wing nicely but it takes time to cut all of these things and cut and cut and cut and just demonstrate that I'll just put uh, a can below so I can cut. So I have to go down and then from one side to another side like it takes time and it's pain and then when you cut everything as you want and then you have to do this and when you cut enough you actually need to dub the body do the do, 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 do hackle uh, you need to cover, you need to, do, to use excessive thread wraps so instead of doing that let's do something else so the hook is going to be size 10 but it's pretty large because it's kind of simulator hook for those of you who like to see the exact model this is the one Chinese I don't know the exact brand please don't ask anyway the thread is a bit more famous it's Emberfly and it's 6 odd and I like it because it's strong it's thick so I don't need too many wraps to cover what I need to cover now Instead of doing proper, usual start of the fly like this, I'm going to start like this. Notice this. Instead of going normal way, just go around the hook with your tag end. I'll slide where I want my tail to start and I'll just go towards the hook eye. This is called reverse jump hitch. The best way to learn this is to go to Global Fly Fisher and search for a reverse jam hitch and it's tied by Wayne Lou Allen over there. He he knows how to explain things uh, way better than, than I do, I have to admit that. Now, I'll just go all the way where I want my uh, wings to start. This is more or less here. So here I'm going to use this hair, and this hair is comparison hair, and I never, I mean, 
I never tried to compare it on that actually I've been using with this here because this here is bad it's like super bad I know it's good brand but I don't like this one it's too thin it's not hollow but it's perfect for something else and let me show you for what it's perfect for the tail for the tail I'm just gonna cut small clump like so I'm just gonna take out this odd hair and remove those short hairs and I'll end up with a rather thin clump of hair and I'll just make it relatively short it's not there to, to support too much the fly more for aesthetic reasons yes it is going to support the fly a little bit but I put it here I can I just like how it looks the wings are going to be the main reason uh, which is actually holding the fly on the surface and legs as you will see this is cut by an angle uh, so I will create a taper towards the hook eye later it doesn't it won't have that abrupt bump which will in, in return just make it difficult to tie in the hackle now notice how I'm going to tie dubbing for dubbing I'm going to use golden stone color antron so I'm not going to use the whole clump I'm going to use fair length of the thread on very small amounts of dubbing mounted in the clockwise direction like so and I'm gonna cover again fair amount of the thread with this dubbing and create a very thin noodle then just go backwards and let's say laminate the thread with layers of antron dubbing which in return will make very durable and very a heavy duty uh, antron body it can be compact, it can be tight it won't be destroyed easily and as you can see it has a very nice shape to it so I'm gonna just laminate it uh, until I'm f like satisfied with how it looks of course in addition to, to what I just do now uh, if I need it to be longer I'll just add some more later so take your time, do this properly, do it nicely and you will end up with a rather decent or you can even say pretty fly. So it has tapered this dubbing so I'll just go and touch and turns pretty hard like I'm, you can see that hook is bending under my pressure but look at the taper I got it looks perfect so I'll add a little bit more dubbing here because I need to cover everything up and I'll do the same technique so I'll just use laminating style I don't know if it's a style but I just I find it it's it's good to do it this way so I'll just continue and here you can actually taper down and thin out everything like so um, I may add a little bit more here the good thing about Antron is going it uh, the trout are going to cut it break it and make it like a trailing shock behind so it's going to be pretty uh, uneven uh, in appearance like after a couple of fish there is going to be like a like a shine, like a shiny whale around the fly. I mean, you can do that with Velcro immediately. Actually, I, I was having a Velcro on my fishing vest. I would just brush it before I fish. New fly I would just brush it out to get that scruffy effect. Now, let's stop talking a little bit and do some tying. So, it's time to tie in wings, and I'm going to use Bull Elk by Nature Spirit. And Nature Spirit is supposed to be one of the best suppliers for deer here of any kind. And that's something that I've heard from a couple of, couple of people. 
including Wayne Will Allen, including Kelly Gallup. I think I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but Gunnar Brummer, the, the guy that ties streamers amazingly. So they all I think agree that they these guys have amazing stuff. And me being not so experienced with your hair, at least not as they are, I actually I can just agree with that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm removing the underfur, which is very important. So I just remove the, the initial part by my fingers, using my fingers, and then I'll be using I'm using Velcro. And you can see I, I just removed a couple of hairs as well, which is okay. They're shorter, and that now I don't have any more underfur. Now look at this clump over here, like ah. Oh, it's too much of a bother to do that. Open your hair stacker and just do it the reverse way. Okay. And then I can't do it on my desk, the baby's sleeping in another room. And then I end up with a couple of well, I have to clean up these things with a couple of hairs, which are, well, upside down. Well, let's st I'll stack it just one more time, who cares? Or maybe not. Why? Why not? I won't be lazy this time. You guys deserve the best I can do. Maybe it's not the best, but this is the best I can do. So I'll stack it again, and as you can see, tips are even. Always remove the hair in the direction you're going to tie it, so not with your right hand facing this way, then you have to change the sides. And let me measure the, the length of the wing. I want it to more or less align with the tips of the tail. So I'll just hold it with my fingers here. And then I'll just work with my fingers towards the butt ends and stop where I want to cut it. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to angle the hair, so I didn't cut it flush, I cut it at an angle, and I'm going to just cut it to catch it with my thread like so with two turns and then pull upwards and then just go and cover all those butt ends toward the eye and it's good to do it with flat thread because it will catch more of them evenly. Now I'll go backwards. Now, as you can see, I don't need to cut too many buttons now because what I did, I cut them by an angle, I used appropriate size, and when I cover this with the dubbing, it's going to be perfect. And what I need to do is angle this here upwards to catch as many hairs to direct them above the hook above the hook shank sorry okay wait a so now let me see down I want to do it a little bit more back okay let me see yep this looks good now, it's time for the hackle. Let me see is this one. No, oh, seems okay. It's not the perfect quality as you can see. But I don't need perfect quality for this one. What I need is length. And I did it from the rooster cape. I took it from the rooster cape. Now, I need length of rachis, like so. But because I'm going to wind it this direction and if I don't remove these they're gonna end up pressed like so and they're gonna go in all those directions around so I'm just gonna remove a couple of them from here from the let's say above so you can see it's not symmetrical anymore so let me just show you what I'm going to do I'm gonna lay it and I'm not gonna push barbs next to the thread here. Now, well, let me change the angle for you. 
So I'm not gonna tie in the thread very near these barbs because it will again direct them in the wrong way. I'm just gonna tie it like so with bears, bear, bear rakes or stem. People call it stem. So this is okay, and then I'll do uh, dubbing two two ways, backwards, forward, uh, just to make it a little bit thicker. Of of course, I could have done it just towards the eye. laminating it same way but as you can see it's not as neat as it was for the body now I'm gonna read I'm gonna leave just enough for the eye for the sorry for the head oh my god what's wrong with my brain now notice one thing here I'm gonna add a little bit more dubbing and that's not what you notice. I notice what I can do with wings. If you use just slight pressure, not too much, you can actually get those wings to get together even more. To get to direct them. Okay. Now the taper goes well. I don't like this thread showing up here. So just add a little bit more. Well, get decided not to come in, but I hope I can continue where I stopped. So what I did, I created the taper, nice shape for everything. I kept all the hair along the shank or above. Don't keep it under the shank. Now it's time to do the hackle. And now it's time to see why I did what I did. Just okay so I'm starting it with bear shank bear stem bear rakes I'll do rather dense turns but I want orange to show through and then I want again to to immerse the hackle into the dubbing so it will be protected from the trout teeth at least a little bit and that's it and you don't need too much these are legs just go backwards flatten the thread move away all those barbs away move those barbs away keep the tension on the thread pull this well, I just redirected it as I don't want it, but well, let me do the so what finish I'm starting at the rear. Now you can see it because it's black and white, and tighten it towards the band. That's it. Nice formed head. Now look at this. I'm pulling the tension on the thread and I just push my scissors. Now let me see what we did. The only thing I don't like is this couple of barbs going in, but it's okay. So guys, this would be the stimulator. Well, half of it because it's not polymered. Uh, I like to use when there is a stonefly hatch because it reminds me of a stonefly and I do like to believe that it, remi it reminds trout on the stone uh, uh, of the stonefly as well. So I just use some floatant for the wings, not important so much but I like it because it floats more and it repels the, the, the fish slime I think a little bit better. Uh, it's very visible. That's why I like this color. I, I use it for riffles, for fast water. I love it for fast water because fish, they smash it over there. Now, 
you will see. When I go with my hackle, and when I start my first wrap, oops, uh, it will go perpendicular. Let me see, just, oh yeah, it's broken. So I have to do it again on the hook. Anyway, I'm not satisfied with this. There is a bump over here. I don't want to have this bump. And this is why you need to cut it by an angle. So I'll just back up and do it again. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. It helps my channel grow and share, subscribe. And see you next week.